Where are the parents? Judge, I'll, I'll resend them the Zoom link. They said they had it, but let me, I'll, I'll redo that right now. Okay. Where's Mr. Weatherby? Anybody seen him? He was emailing yesterday, Judge, for the Zoom invite, so I know he has it. Let me, I can email him too. Here's like, well, we got to go on and start because I got other stuff to do too. So, okay, here's Lisa. They're the parents. Uh, Sorry, we were on the wrong the wrong docket thing. I was sent two different Zoom meetings. Okay, Mr. Kelly, meeting. you need to take your hat off. Okay, we'll go on and start. Uh, well, Your Honor, I don't see my people. I'm sorry. I'm John Dozel with well, uh, the department. I, you know, uh, we're starting anyway. Everybody's uh, my rules been out since Zoom since COVID started. But everybody's supposed to be here ten minutes early. That like, all people have my rules, so that's the way it goes. Okay, um, I had to change locations because I didn't have a bailiff this afternoon. So we're on uh, regular. Zoom. Does anybody have any objections to that? No, I didn't think oh, so. Oh, Your Honor. Thank you. Here's Mr. Weatherby. Um, Y'all, what happened to the former placement? Um, I was like, oh my gosh. Right before Christmas? Miss Sims, what happened? Casa, what's, what's, what, what, what? Oh, man, I, was, I read the first child and I'm like, surely it didn't happen to all of them. And then I was like, oh my gosh, when I was reading the Casa report. Yeah, as far as I understand, Judge, the... Um Placement just said they couldn't do it anymore. Put in notice. Good timing. Five days before Christmas. Merry yes, Christmas. Ma yes, ma'am. And I actually have to read in the therapy notes from the older child. I'm kind of glad it happened because he was hoarding really? food at King Star because he said that his younger siblings weren't getting enough food at the last placement at his aunt's house. Did you say enough food? Yes, ma'am. That's what he told his therapist. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Um, wow. So can Belong not find them a placement? Um, why are we at the shelter? What, what's up with that? Oh, the apartment people are here. Y'all yeah. raise your hand. Do you swear the testimony about or Belong? Do you swear the further the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so happy God. Yes, um, I'm supposed to be on 10 minutes before a court day, FYI. So, um, okay, why are they, why can we not find placement? Why are we at the shelter? Somebody. So, um, the last placement that the children were in were was a kinship placement. I know. Um, kinship gave um, notification that they are not, a, they were not able to um, take care of the kids' behaviors that they were um, exhibiting, and that they felt that they were no longer the best uh, placement for the children. So we looked at other placements. Um, we reached out to other family members and uh, to see if they were able to able and willing to take the children. Uh, we reached out to Lisa Medlock's father. He stated that he was not able to. Um, so due to the short time frame that we had to move the kids, uh, we deemed that the emergency shelter was in their best interest at the time. Number 20, what's happened since then? For the children? You're cutting out, Sorry. Your Honor. I was on it all morning, don't know what the problem is. Um, so the placement changed approximately December 20th. What's been going on to look for children for another placement since then? So we have not identified any other relatives that would be willing to um, take in the kids. Um, as during their stay in K-Star, they've been doing well. Um, they've been able to get appointments scheduled that the previous placement was not able to take care of. Um, I recently did have a child service plan meeting with K-Star on Monday of this week, 
and they informed me that they would be willing to extend the kids' stay in KSTAR if they needed to, if no other placement was found. How long are they? does KSTAR normally keep children? I would need to check on the exact time frame for that. Um, due to the kids' ages, I believe um, it would standard procedure is 90 days, I believe. Um, but KSTAR did say that they were willing to keep them longer. Well, yes, ma'am. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I know the answer to that question, though. Um, when I talked to the shelter manager last week, she said up to a year. Okay. Well, I mean, we haven't been able to find any family. What about just other foster homes? Uh, we have not looked into unrelated foster homes for these children yet. Are y'all hoping that the parents can get the children back sooner than later and no need to get them settled into a foster home? Or why, why, why don't we look into a foster home? I believe the services that they are getting set up with at K-Star are very beneficial to them right now and something that the previous placement was not able to take care of. Um, the children have recently started seeing a therapist at K-Star um, or through K-Star and they have got all the appointments set up and scheduled. Um, the two younger children have seen an ear, nose and throat doctor um, so we believe that with these services that the children are getting set up in, we're not um, trying to like take them out of those services yet. And Lyons, uh, are y'all happier with the children at the shelter or would y'all uh, rather than be in a foster home? Um, okay, go on, Mr. Sims. Okay. <laughs> Um, at first I was not, but since I talked to the shelter manager and everybody there and gone to visit the kids, um, I think since our plan is family unification, they're in Kerrville, visitation is close, all these services that was, were not able to get done in the months preceding are getting done they're getting in therapy. They're getting the appointments they need. Um, the boys seem to like it there. Mason told me, and I think he told Casa too, that the school is so much better. Um, so unless we can find a home close to Fredericksburg that would take all three boys together, I would prefer to leave them where they are right now. Okay. Mr. McLemore, what do you think? Yes, ma'am. I mean, just the difference that Cindy has seen in the children and Kendra too, since they've been there and Blaine as well. I mean, we were struggling to get services. Uh, Liam had foreign objects in his ear and we were trying to get him to an ENT for three months and couldn't do it with a form replacement. And KSR was able to do it with Blaine's help in two weeks. So I think just the services they're receiving right now and like Kendra said, them being together is key and being local. So I wouldn't even say Fredericksburg unless there's a home in Kerrville. Because the boys really like going to the Kerrville ISD and all their services are here and they're getting really good services. So I'd like to see that continue. Was the prior problem placement problem or lack of providers or all the above? I would say it's more the placement because Blaine and I both had offered and Cindy as well to take the boys to services if needed. And they were just very hard to communicate with and with bold faced lie to us and just... Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of problems with this. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that sounds good. Um, department, what about um, DNA? Where are we in that? I mean, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. Where are we on DNA? For Christopher Kelly, we have sent out finders reports. Um, and we had located him at, well, we hadn't located him. He was in jail and had bonded out the same day. Um, so we have, we knew he was locked up for a little bit, but we have, um, 
requested finder searches and we have received those and we have provided those results to the regional attorney's office as well, but we haven't been able to find a solid address for Christopher Kelly yet. Well, he bonded out. He has an address on bond. Have you gotten a copy of his bond? I'm not sure if we have a copy of his bond. That's something I would need to check on. Yeah, it, that will be listed. Or, and I'm, <clears throat> I don't know anything about how it was in Harris County, wasn't it? Did I make that up? Or was it in Harris County, right? Um, yes. They, have, they probably have some sort of release program. You know, I, I, they might, you might be able to contact them and see how they do something like that. He might be on some sort of conditions of release or I don't know. Uh, the district clerk's office, uh, if it's a, pit, a felony, or like I said, once again, I don't know anything about how Harris County works, but they got to have an address for him in a criminal file if, he, if he's been indicted. Okay. Miss Harris, you know anything about your client? No, Your Honor, I did speak to him at the beginning of the case. He said he was willing to do DNA testing, and he did not believe he was the father, but... I've had con I've had trouble getting in touch with him since. Okay. And uh, what about Mr. Shipman? What what's up with him? Like his services that he's completed. Y'all done finders on him? Has he been? I don't even know if he's, he's been served or anything. He has been served. Yes. He's 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 present. Oh, with Mom. that's Mr. Shipman. That's right. My, my, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, meant the unknown. We don't know anything else about the unknown, correct? Yes. We don't know anything else, correct? Yes. <laughs> that's kind of a that's kind of a bad question. We don't have any more clues about the unknown, right? No, we don't. Okay. Okay. Did, and I don't remember this. Did Mr. Shipman do DNA for Liam? because I had him listed as an alleged also. I'm not sure if that was completed, that I would need to check on that. Mr. Saldivar, do you know, do you know anything about that? I, I don't think that he's done DNA uh, on, on, on that child, Judge. Unless Mr. Shipman has done other, I know mom has her hand up, Judge, they can unmute and address that, but I don't think so. He is not the biological father. He just took um, responsibility for all of Liam's medical, all of Liam's everything. He's been paying for Liam's medical since he was like six months old. Okay. And you're 100% positive he's not the biological father, correct? Yeah. Get together until after I had Liam. But okay. he took all the parental responsibilities of Liam when we got together. Did the petition have him... As an let me look as an alleged father of Liam, I don't know because I had that on my record, but I don't know where I would have gotten that. Let me see. The alleged father of Liam is William Shipman. The alleged father of Liam is John Tanner Guthrie, but he's deceased. So okay, so we need to non-suit Mr. Shipman as the alleged father of Liam. And Miss uh, Medlock, you don't know, I mean, you think the father was Mr. Guthrie or you think, he, what do you think about that, paternity of Liam? Yes, it, it was Mr. Guthrie, as far as I know. Um, we were going through the proceedings and all that and then he passed away, unfortunately. Um, so that's when, Mr. Shipman stepped in and signed acknowledgement and all that to he he told them he wasn't the father, but he would take full parental responsibilities for Liam. So did he sign an acknowledgement of paternity? I don't yeah, I think so. I did. I was like, I don't I don't I don't know. I think I did. Pretty sure. They asked him to come in to sign paperwork. I was not with him when that happened. Hmm. Like I was physic, I was like with him, but I wasn't like physically in person with him. Yeah, matter? yeah, I know. I understand what you're talking about. Okay. Well, Mr. Salvador, y'all might want to talk about that later and kind of see where we're at in that regard. 
We'll do, Yarn. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, can I ask, has, has the department gotten birth certificates or birth verifications? Yes, we get those right away. And what do they what do they show? Your Honor, I don't have them in front of me right now. I'm sorry. Maybe Ms. Crouch can tell you. Because I have, you know, two or three guys for two of the kids. Yes. Yeah. For Liam, it looks like there is no father on the birth certificate. However, the regional attorney's office did send over an order establishing a relationship between uh, Liam and Mr. Shipman that we can provide out to the parties. For Braxton, Mr. Shipman is listed on the birth certificate as the father. Right. And then for Mason, there's no father on the birth certificate. Okay. Okay. So that answered my question about DNA. Uh, why move? We got that one. Um, and Your Honor, if I can ask it also, it, it, could anybody else be the father besides Mr. Kelly? Ms. Medlock, that's directed to you. No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody have anything else as to paternity? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, as to uh, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Shipman, I just not there doing their service plan and things are coming along. Yes. What does the department need from the parents today? Um, so both parents are in compliance with their family plans. Um, we had an FGC in December and discussed how services were going. And um, we communicated with the parents that we would like to see more responsibility in therapy, more accountability for the actions that led to removal, and overall just more responsibility about why the case is here. Um, in those weeks since the FGC that was held in December, um, we, have got, we have started to get more positive therapist um, notes and more positive notes from the parent educators that the parents work with. Um, up until that point, uh, before the FGC, we had um, not received positive recommend, uh, recommendations from the therapist. Um, it was the prior notes talked a lot about um, lack of accountability and lack of or not being willing to address um, the situations that happened that led to removal. But um, since that FGC, um, everything's turned around and reports have been positive lately. Okay, good. Uh, remind me what kind of visitation we're doing. So visitation currently is two hours a week for both parents on Wednesdays. Together with all three of the children? Yes. In the okay. past, um, Mr. Shipman was only able to show up for the last hour of the visit, but it's my understanding that with his new job, uh, his hours are a little more flexible, so he's able to be there for the full two hours with the children. Okay, good. What are they doing support-wise and kind-wise to help out with the, with the boys? During the visits? Or just provide some type of child support, whether it's money or goods, clothes, shoes, et cetera. They provide clothes and shoes for the children. Um, I know just yesterday, Mason's boots were broken and they took them after the visit to get them repaired for him. Um, they've provided Christmas presents for the children. Uh, the children were really excited about that. Um, they're very active and present in the visits, um, very attentive. Um, to the children's needs and wants. They always provide food and drinks for the children at the visits. Um, they're attentive in making sure that uh, Braxton, the youngest child, has his um, diaper changed and that all the children are in good health during their visits. Okay. Good. Okay. Y'all need any orders today, sir? So... Belong would be in favor of increasing visitation during the week. Um, 
we do have some things that we would like to see before unsupervised visitation occurs. Um, one of those things being responsibility and therapy and addressing the reasons for removal, which has already started. And we're feeling, um, we, we would like to continue more um, in therapy um, and keep getting those positive therapist recommendations. Um, we also want to see the parents be able to like admit that sometimes raising children is hard. Sometimes you're going to lose, uh, you're going to lose your patience. Sometimes you need extra support in your life. Um, there are so many factors that come in when raising children. So we want to see them admit that sometimes they need help with it and be able to identify those supports that can help them. Um, another thing is that I would like to hear from each parent individually what they have learned in therapy, what they feel like they've gained from it, um, how they feel like it will help them moving forward. And those are, those are the big things, just taking accountability. We want to see that continue and see what each parent learn individually in therapy. And when y'all want to increase the visits, do y'all, uh, are you want to increase them supervised for, for a while? We would like to increase supervised visitation first before moving to unsupervised visitation. Yes. But we would also like, um, the court to grant the parties the ability to um, confer with each other and decide um, when that unsupervised visitation would be able to take place. That's fine. Um, would y'all, I mean, and I guess this is something y'all could talk about and I don't know if y'all do it for long, but do y'all ever do like sandwich visits? Like family visits? Is yeah, I call them sandwich visits. Like they're, they're uh, supervised for a little bit, maybe 30 minutes, and then they go out and go to dinner, go mess around, go to the park, and then come back and do like 30 more minutes of supervised. I believe that is a policy that we do, but I would need to check in on the specifics okay. of what that would entail. Okay. Uh, remind me where the parents live now. The parents are currently living in Fredericksburg. Okay, so they're closed for all the visits and everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any any lawyers have any questions from Belong? Um, yeah, just I, I I do have a couple of questions, Judge. Um, yes. we have one of the kids is having a birthday coming up. Uh, could the department make some arrangements for the parents to throw a birthday party and maybe have an extended visit for that birthday party? I'll tell yes. You. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we are that Lane and I have. Huh? Okay, and um, what do you envision uh, that, how long that birthday uh, visit would be? Um, I feel like it would be about two hours to give the time or give the children time to come home from school and to uh, prepare for the birthday party. And then um, two hours as to not keep them out too late. Okay. Now, are, are any of the children having any surgeries uh, coming up? Liam recently went to the ENT, and um, during this time, his tonsils were very large. Um, the ENT recommended that um, removing his tonsils might be a good option for him. Um, no uh, surgery has been scheduled or anything. Nothing has been decided about that, but the ENT did let K-Star know that that might be a good option for him moving forward. Okay. If the children have any surgeries, uh, is the department opposed to the, the parents attending the surgeries with the children? Not at all. We would actually like to see the parents um, attend medical appointments for the children now um, okay. to kind of get in the habit of being there with them. Okay. And will you update the parents on when they'll have visits so that they can make arrangements with work to attend those doctor's appointments? Yes, I will. Okay. And uh, other than the tonsils, any other major medical concerns for the children? So Liam and Braxton both needed to go see an ENT. Um, it was determined, um, K-Star let me know that Braxton does still have his tubes in his ears. Um, and Liam had um, foreign objects in his ears. It appeared to be the 
um, the little balls that come in beanbag chairs. Um, so as Liam and Braxton go to the ENT more, I'm sure we'll have more recommendations from them later down the road. Okay. And as far as the unsupervised visitation, I know the parents are wanting that as soon as possible. Uh, is the department wanting to see a recommendation from the therapist before they can agree to that? Yes. Belong would like to see recommendations from both the parents' therapists. Okay. Are the therapists aware that the parents are wanting that so that they can address that as soon as possible in therapy? I am not sure if they specifically know that, um, but I can contact the therapist and um, Ms. Medlock and Mr. Shipman can let their therapist know as well. Okay. Pass the witness, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Shadowar. Anybody else have any questions? No questions, Judge. No, thank you, no, no questions, Your Honor. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, anybody have any witnesses today? Yeah. No? Y'all are being quiet. <laughs> no, Judge, I just want to address the court if I can. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm asking that you approve the birthday visit. I don't think there's any opposition to that. I, the, I yeah, and the parent. Needed. And, and the parents do want to. Uh, attend the, the doctor's visits and any surgery so they can come for the children. And then they are wanting to request unsupervised time, Judge. They, they're in compliance. Uh, and so they want that. I understand the department wants to go slow on that, but they are asking for unsupervised time at this time. I've got something that we can talk about in just a second about visitation too. Okay. Okay. Mr. McLemore, anything else you want to add? No, ma'am, just that the children seem to be doing really well. And I'm, I'm very proud of the parents for the change that they've made just in the past few weeks. I think that's very right. good. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I <clears throat> read my file last night to get ready for court today. And, you know, I mean, of course, the first thing I read is that they were going to you know, move. I was like, ah, you know, I kind of freaked out about that. <clears throat> but then I read that the parents were doing well, and I was I was happy. You know, today this is was a good hearing. Uh, Ms. Sims, what about you? Um, I think we addressed everything, Your Honor. The only thing I have down is um, I know Mason would like to have phone calls with his mom and um, Mr. Shipman. And when I talked to K-Star, they did say that they could accommodate that. That They just, it's easier if they're on a schedule. So like every Monday at five or something. Okay. Um, and so I think that would be good for the parents and the kids. Just even just 15 minutes or something. Okay. Okay, well, here's what I have. <clears throat> sorry, y'all. Here's what I have written down so far. We can dis discuss these if, if we need to. Um, I said, um, hold on. Next to that. Mr. Kelly and the unknown father. I, Obviously, he didn't know not appear. Their attorneys did. Uh, I'm going to say placement as agreed by Belong and the Atlantis. That's just in case, you know, y'all just y'all find the best foster home in the world in the Kerrville area that y'all can agree to a placement change without having, without having to come back to court to make that change. Um, I'm not anticipating that, but y'all have that right if, if need be. Uh, Mr. Shipman is non-suited as the father of Liam. Uh, the parents can have a supervised birthday party for Mason. I'm going to say parents' visits increase as agreed by CPS and the Atlantis per the parents' therapist recommendation. Um, parents to attend children's doctor appointments and surgeries as long as the parents remain service plan compliant. Uh, parents can FaceTime one time a week for 30 minutes each. And I'm, I don't really want to set the date and time. I'm going to let placement to, uh, uh, belong and see uh, the items do that because y'all can get with the shelter and see, you know, what their schedule is. You know, uh, you know, they might have other, you know, if I said 5.30 on Mondays, you know, some other kids might have 5.30 on Mondays with their parents and I want to make it as easy as possible for the shelter. 
Okay. So did that cover everything everybody needs? Yes. Mr. Saldivar, did that cover you? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And, and you know, I, I'm a, as long as he had items and belong are okay, but supervised, you know, once we kind of get to that point, I, I'm okay with that too. I doesn't, y'all know everything better than me. So, uh, but I do agree uh, with Mr. Blaine. I think that some responsibility is real important, especially especially considering the removal facts in this case, that that's, this is an odd situation. I don't think I've ever had a case like this before. So I, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's huge. Okay. Y'all are still being quiet. Okay. Nobody needs anything else. No, you're on. Okay. Miss hey, Shipman and Miss Metlock. Y'all have service plans. You have to comply or your parental rights could be subject to termination. Uh, you know that. Y'all are working your plans. Y'all are doing real well. Um, our next, uh, our second permanency hearing is 425. I mean, I am really happy. Can you hear me now? Yes. Man, I was saying some good stuff, too. Okay, uh, so I can remember. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Metlock and Mr. Shipman, I um, am really happy how, I've said this a couple times, how we're progressing, especially considering how this case started out. And I really, you know, the way I like to do visitation, y'all don't know, because I don't have, Ms. Ms. Sims does, and Harris knows, y'all had cases with me over the years. But I like to do baby steps. I want to do maybe a sandwich visit, maybe a couple hours unsupervised, you know, take the kids to the park, take them to the river, you know, do something like that. And then we'll get to like four hours. Then we'll get to like all day. And then we'll get to like, you know, one overnight. Then we'll get to like a weekend overnight. But hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe by the next permanency hearing, we might have worked all the little baby steps, as I call it, to start working real close to monitored return. Okay. I don't know we're going to be there in April, but, but I would keep everything crossed that we can. Okay. M Mr. Weatherby, I think that's your client. She has her hand raised. You want her to be quiet or you want her to ask a question or talk? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Weatherby, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Your client has her hand raised. Can she, can you want her to be quiet or you want her to talk or ask the question or what? Well, if you've got a question, I'd like her to ask it because I can't okay. read the minds. So, uh, Ms. Mellon, did you have something you had with your hand raised? I was going to ask. So just to be clear. Um, so what does that look like as far as, taking responsibility do you want me to work up a like a journal of like our plans for when we get them back like how we plan on like what our plans are what our discipline techniques are going to be like I can do that I can put like I can put like a whole journal thing together and then turn it into Blaine if he approves like how does that how does that look well I think that's a good point I think like Mr. Blaine said, taking some responsibility for why we're here in the first place is big. And, and in my opinion, how we're going to not have those kind of problems happen in the future, which is pretty much what you're talking about, right? Well, I thought perhaps that would be the therapist's recommendation. So I think working with the therapist to make that recommendation uh, is what the parents need to do. Right. Because you're going to learn all, uh, hopefully, you're going to learn all these responsibility and acceptability and all that stuff. You're going to learn all that in therapy. You should be. Yes, ma'am. And me and my therapist have been going over that for a few weeks now. And so has my husband. No, we really have. Um... Um, my, my therapist, 
Uh, we haven't been going over really that kind of stuff. Uh, for some reason, she wasn't under the she was under the assumption that we wasn't going over that. We was just doing strictly therapy, and that's what she was. That's what she told me. That's what she was billing whoever she got to bill to get paid for whatever she's doing. That so um, I went over with this last visit. I went over with her that we're supposed to be doing the parent or not the parenting, but the just like uh take like taking responsibility uh choices and stuff that we make that impact the kids and stuff like that and just pretty much that stuff well i'm not a therapist and have never been a therapist but to me and i'm not trying to tell your therapist how to do their job but you know to me why we got here and how we can overcome that in the future uh I would think that would be a uh, kind of a big thing in therapy. Yeah, I, I would think so too, but that's what she wanted to talk about. So, so, so maybe here's just like a spitball. Um, maybe Blaine needs to give us like homework sheets of like stuff we need to work on our therapist with. Like maybe we need to like start filling out like accountability sheets mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Um, I'm just spitballing to try to, help as much as I can because I do I do want to get my kids back yes I know well you know I think Mr. Blaine and Mr. McLemore if Mr. McLemore, if Mr. McLemore do you talk to the therapist will they talk to you no ma'am we get therapist notes from them but they don't talk to us okay Mr. Blaine you talk to the therapist right I have spoken to both Miss um, Medlock and Mr. Shipman's therapist okay well, I think I want you to talk to the therapist and about what we're sitting here talking about right now. And, and, and my, I feel the same way you do about what you, what is important for you to where we need to get to, to progress. And I, I totally agree with that. Could, could so, we, could we be ordered to a family group conference with the, the, I guess the limited scope of having the therapist there. So we have the parents, the attorneys and the department, so that the therapist understands where we're coming from and the department's coming from. So we're all on the same page. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Shackford, do you have your hand raised? Yes, I think uh, uh, Lisa's, uh, you know, taking, writing out a journal would, is a great idea about where, you know, what she's doing in therapy, a journal for taking care of the kids and, you know, and what her plans are to take care of herself, like you were saying, as a parent and getting overwhelmed. And uh, and then I think uh, from reading the therapy notes, I don't think um, each, each one of the parents' therapists does not know the background of the other parent. So uh, like Lisa's therapist, I don't know if she's aware of uh, uh, William's diagnosis. And um, and I think that would be very very helpful, and uh, and also uh, Mr. Shipman, he has a lot of background that he's they're probably trying to help him with too, though so he can you know be a, a you know a more successful parent and you know he has a lot of his own um, issues. But uh, well, but you know, if we're going to be together as a family and co-parent, be together as a couple, you know, each other's therapist, I think each other's therapist knowing about, you know, the person I'm living with, what, what, you know, how we can work and play well and get along. I think that's real important. Um, I think Mr. Saldivar's idea of having a family group conference with the uh, parents, attorneys, possibly and the therapists about responsibility, acceptability. Uh, I think that's a great idea. And I'm, I am going to order that. And I think that's something that y'all can talk about there. And y'all might not, parents, y'all might not want, you know, the whole world to know about y'all's background. You know, they're everybody here, but, you know, they've got your psychologicals, they've got everything. And, you know, this is all, once again, this is all why we're here, you know, and we need to work on getting better. That's not really the best word I want to say, but y'all know what I mean. So we don't have to come back. Yes, okay. ma'am. 
pretty sure we got all the background and the uh, like psyche valves and like we've done all that before with our previous therapist, the one that we had before uh, our new ones now. Well, and uh, but like Miss Chef was saying, you know, maybe I didn't share. I, I don't know. You know, it. it I, I can tell you that I do talk about my husband and his uh, diagnosis with my therapist. She does know everything. Um, and we have been talking about like, you know, coping mechanisms for that I could help out for my husband's diagnosis and then vice versa. We do talk about that stuff. I don't know if maybe she doesn't know that she's supposed to put that in the notes. And yeah, I don't know if that would be that there either but yeah i talk with um my counselor too about lisa too it's it's not like it's we spend 90 percent of our time away from work with each other so like that's where all of our stories come from with me and my therapist we just sit there and like whenever we're talking about how each other's week's going on right at the beginning that's all we talk about our week she talks about her husband and then I talk about my wife and for about like 10, 15 minutes. And then we go on to other stuff, more stuff. So we are, I believe that we are talking with our therapist about our significant others and stuff like that. But I don't know how we'd go more in depth about it. Well, than... y'all have a family group conference and y'all can all sit down and have a big powwow about all this. That sounds amazing. Do you know about the time frame of when we're looking at doing this just so we can be the most effective? Um, I want to start working on that like as soon as possible because I do want that obstacle to be behind I you. Yeah, I, I, w I would like all the obstacles to align to where we could get our kids back because, I mean, we are really trying over here. We're doing no, everything. Yeah. Work. Well, Ask you know, we got a gazillion lawyers on this case. We got Casa. We got the, you know, Belong, and we got some therapists. And you know, probably get, and we have a lot of training at the end of February. So you know, getting everybody together is going to take an act of Congress to get that arranged with everybody's schedules. But uh, you know, I hope within you know between now and I, I'd like to say the end of February, but I can't, I can't say, you know. Uh, somebody needs to take, uh, I guess Mr. Blaine needs to talk to the therapist and maybe circulate some dates that get their dates that they're available, then circulate them to see how, when everybody else can meet. But I don't really want to put a, a time deadline on that because, um, I, I mean, I agree. I think the sooner we, because it's got to my mind, it's kind of hard to progress a whole lot without knowing what the background is to, to help us through. And, and it sounds like they do know your background and we're working on it, but you know, are we going to family therapy yet? I know, I know the two littles probably can't do that. I know that his therapist is having me go to his therapy session on Tuesday. So we're going to have, together therapy with his therapist on Tuesday so she can discuss um I, I guess a couple things and I think we're gonna do that every other week because she meets with him every day at 6 30 okay. and I am only off every other Tuesday. Okay. Well that'll be real helpful too. Good. Yay. Okay. Well that's good, good news. Your Honor, I have one question. I'm sorry, I might have missed this. Okay. But birthday party is that to be supervised or unsupervised yes sir, yes, sir. supervised for yes, two sir. hours i don't care however long or whatever yeah uh, two hours sounds like a good a good limit for a birthday party thank yes ma'am thank you yes ma'am are all the kids going to be allowed to be at the said birthday party or just mason yeah everybody it's a big family visit everybody can go and are we allowed to bring some of our family members to join as well to see our kids so some of our family Ooh. members I don't, I don't know that one. Her, my stepmom, his mother. Yeah, you um, know, since it's going to be supervised at K-Star, I think that's going to be something that, you know, I, I'm not going to order anything that's anti their rules. I mean, whatever they allow, I'm okay with. They're going to be allowed to, like, go and, like, I don't know, take my kids out to eat, like, at Mama Cita's where they sing really loud and, and kind of 
embarrass, <laughs> embarrass the kids a little bit. Well, but number one, who's who's going to be the you know we've got to figure out who's going to be the supervisor, and who, Mr. Blaine, who's super, been supervising the visitation so far? In the past, it was our mobile case aide who specializes in supervising visits. But she actually took another position in Belong, so I have been supervising the visits until uh, our new MCA is ready to do that. Okay. Um, you know, I don't really care. I mean, you know, it, it needs to be reasonable because Mr. Blaine has to be able, he can't supervise 35 people. You know, that's crazy. You know, and we need to make sure there's nobody that's a registered sex offender, or someone that's high or, you know, crazy stuff like that. And I'm not saying they are. But, you know, let Mr. Blaine know who you want to, to come to the party and everybody just be reasonable, reasonable about that. Ms. Shackelford? I think Mason's birthday is Monday or Tuesday, so there's a very short period of time to do that. And I would, uh, K-Star being a shelter with other kids there, you know, it's kind of, I'm not sure about, you know, a lot you, of. You know, I, the way I, this is, y'all are going to like this, but the way I feel about holidays and birthdays and stuff you know, I don't get to see always see my green. You know, we have birthdays a, a week later, a month later. You know, uh, sometimes we have to spread them out. So if y'all don't get to do it exactly on the 30th, you got to do it on the 31st or the 1st. As long as somebody tells Mason, parents are going to have it. We're going to have a birthday party for you. Let's work it out that way. Okay. I mean, y'all can work it out for the 30th. Y'all can get it planned and organized by the 30th. I just don't know. I just said y'all can have one. So y'all can figure it out. Okay. That, are we good? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Uh, I hope to hear more good news the next hearing. Y'all are excused. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Bye-bye.